and we are live on the stream. Beetle, 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 dee. Oh my goodness! No one believed that we could go live on the stream. Then one day we uh, invented a robot. I wish I had thought about the ending before I began this. Mm-hmm. 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 Here we go. Uh, should, should, should this be the official shot? No, it shouldn't. For the record, it shouldn't. I'm happen. just saying. I'm, I'm just aware. saying it's not a bad shot. I'm aware. <laughs> it it's some, a good great night it, shot. It is not a good weird thing shot. No, but 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 like it, I like I I I am, I am aware that it is funny. Let's get it going. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, let me, uh, you know what? Uh, there's no need for a three shot. We have two, two shots. That's all that matters. Uh, okay. All right. Um, Andrew, at your discretion, we are ready to launch. Okay, Brian. Um, I realized a thing about calendars and in, in doing like calendar stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, you need to put when you're not available to. Ah, oh, were you not available yeah, today? No, I, I had somebody else trying to like book a meeting when I have, I'm going to go to SF next week for something. And then mm -hmm. they said, hey, I'm sorry, I'm not available that day. Then they booked another meeting for the next week, which I'll be at Magic Live. And oh. I'm like, oh, I forgot to put that in my calendar too. So. Mm -hmm. Magic Live. Huh? Attending, I assume. Because uh -huh. uh, as I've been informed, uh, it's... You uh, you are both attending because you're magicians. Both magicians attending. go to Magic yeah. Live. Uh, yep. Oh, cool! Sure. You're going to be there. Very cool. I'll be at attending just like you will. Awesome! I look forward to that, Brian. I mm -hmm. look forward to mm -hmm. sitting next to you as we attend. Mm -hmm. Cool. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, are you? Are you? Uh, if you're feeling it, uh, hang on. I don't know why this. Uh, 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 before we start, before we start, for Brian's benefit, uh, uh, Andrew, have you seen the Deadpool movie? No, no, I have okay. not. I've right. not okay. seen it. So right. that is that is a zero mentions. I will be the merc with a mouth with his lips sewn shut. Okay, all right. Uh, I. Boy, nope, do, boy, nope, nope. Okay, nope. Okay. Start the show. All right. All right. We're going to start the show. Uh, uh, people in the chat, is the stream appropriate? Uh, if so, we're ready to go. Appropriate? Well, I don't know. Like, like, is it Herky Jerkin? Is it the Herky Jerky Dancer? You know, the guy who was at I'm, January 6th? Yeah, that's true. He was. The Herky Jerky Dancer <laughs> was definitely at January 6th. Definitely had an FBI tweet go out looking for him. And then everybody Does said, that's the guy from Mr. Show. Famous actor? And then uh, uh, like, they're like, LOL, that looks like the guy from Mr. Show. To which friends of his said, yep, he was there. It's <laughs> amazing. Uh, okay. All right. Uh Okay. Uh, oh wait, so, are we? Do we have? Yeah, uh, the, the the frame rates are poor. Um, I don't know if I need to restart the streaming or not. I don't know if it's uh, the internet. Hold on. Let me uh, let me let me let me take a look. <sighs> Taking a look. Oh, oh Japanese grunts. Shogun. Haunted some goy. Don't touch my mustache. <laughs> or, uh, Justin's watching ads on a show. So between the Rubik's Cube and the Pyramid, the Rubik's Cube is obviously much harder, but the Pyramid is a lot more fun for some reason. Hmm. Are those both things that you printed? I, I am I am No, no, no. You there are plans for printing Rubik's Cubes though. But, okay. Uh, uh I did print I see you. If you could give us feedback lock. on on just how bad uh, whether it's worth doing some kind of stream fixing. Oh, actually, stream now is showing no longer in the orange. Yeah. No, it looks good to me. Okay. Cool. All right. Well then. Uh, all right. Here we go. In three, two, one, and. 
Hello and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I am Andrew Maine, joined by Brian Brushwood. Ahoy, ahoy. And Mr. Justin Robert Young. Oh, hello. Well, gentlemen, uh, it is, we're recording this at the end of July, and uh, presumably, uh, if we'd written this in advance, we'd be talking about, you know, this, the the return of the astronauts on board the Boeing Starliner back to Earth. Mm. Oh, my God. I, 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 is it bad that I've forgotten about, like, the real-life Martian plot that was happening up in space it right is, now? It is, right? <laughs> They're not back, are they? No, they're not. They're still up there. Still up um, there. So, so for those of you catching up, there is, there were two programs that NASA funded to private programs to bring in astronauts to the National Space Station. The reason we needed this was after the retirement of the space shuttle, our only way to get to the space station was on board Russian rockets. So use rockets, which, yeah. Yeah, which given some of the political instability there uh you know it is political you know instability. you know you know that, that you know american weapons mm. and what's going on in russia and some other places so things are uh, not at a have... high point in terms of diplomacy between the united states and uh, the russian federation yeah although on board the space station everything's cool so the problem was is, so that's why years ago we made this program to say hey we need something new of the two major companies to get funding, Boeing was one, and then SpaceX was the other. Boeing got a larger, like almost twice as much funding as SpaceX did because reasons. And there was the debate about who was going to be first to actually put astronauts on the space station. And a lot of the smart money was, well, Boeing, because Boeing's been doing this for years. As we realized, Boeing is just a name yeah. that you call whoever's standing in the building at the time. Yeah. Th that's it. That's all Boeing means. Is Boeing is just whoever's in the building at the time, that's Boeing. So uh, if a clown car crashes into the building and there's a bunch of clowns in the building, it's still Boeing. That's Boeing. Yeah. So the Starliner, which uh, went through a lengthy process to get certified and finally be able to take astronauts up to space, um, had some issues on the launch pad, and then they finally launched it, docked at the International Space Station, had some issues docking, and then docked. And then they looked at sensor data and said, ah, everything's fine. Everything's cool. We're just going to do some more testing and not return the astronauts when we had planned to and keep mm. them there to do testing. One of the ways they do testing is they actually have another version of the vehicle on the ground that they run through the test and they do a simulation. So you see what's going on in the vehicle up attached to the space station. And they use the ground vehicle to say, hey. Uh, can we recreate this? Can we do this? Whatever. And that's what they're doing right now is they're doing a lot of lengthy testing with the ground vehicle to see if they feel confident about using that as the return vehicle. But everything's fine. They're not stranded. Ah. So wait, they're stranded though, right? This is they're they're stranded in space. This is like an Apollo 13 no. thing. No, they have they have uh, at that. There is like a SpaceX vehicle docked right there. There's a Crew Dragon dock that has extra room and extra spacesuits. So in theory, the plan is they're going to return them on the Starliner. And I hope that yeah. works out. But but and NASA doesn't, we're not talking backups, whatever. Like that's never good, NASA, when you say we're not talking backups. Because yeah. that's been your problem is that is that, you know, people have had very challenging situations. They've been unalived. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm and not to say that this is that situation, that at all, whatever. I'm sure it's fine. It's within the threshold, the margins, or whatever, and and uh, etc. But should they to say, hey, you know, just to be sure, they can put them on. Can I can I ask you this, Maine? Because we've talked a lot about SpaceX and specifically the uh, uh, rocket industrial complex that we have had in America that obviously declined with the space shuttle. We went through a period where Russia was the only way into the stars. SpaceX rises up. The most unlikely of stories that a startup can rival a country's space program now is we are well into the boring period of them just being a regular vendor for uh, businesses and, and the American government to get up into space. Boeing has been a part of the old guard. Obviously, some of these big programs, even as SpaceX grew up, there was this idea that, yeah, but when you're really talking about the big projects, you're talking about Boeing, you're talking about Lockheed, you're talking about the United Launch Alliance, you're talking about the, 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 the companies that are going to rise to the occasion. 
this is not obviously the an, an immediate sea change moment, but I have a hard time looking at it and not saying like, this is one of those, where is Boeing in 20 years, 30 years kind of, kind of moments? Because obviously they've had a lot of problems in terms of, you know, their, their civilian planes, their brand is not exactly in a high place right now. But when you talk about government contracts, these are among the richest and, and, and the ones that have gotten paid out uh, and, and made generational wealth. Do you think that this is a turning point for this company specifically, Boeing? I, you know, I understand Boeing does way more things than we're aware of besides just airplanes and spacecraft. They do way more things as a you know defense contractor, as a aviation, et cetera. Um, you know, they, they can afford to not have portions of those business, although losing, you know, the aircraft business, which they're not going to, but it, if they can't fix things reputationally, they do not have a good reputation. And that is not when your business is transportation of people, the worst thing you can have is a bad reputation in that regard. Uh, best case scenario, management improves, management understands some of the structural problems they made. One of the things they did, which was problematic was, you know, Boeing originally, you'd think of it as their Washington company because they're the you know largest big building in the world or whatever at the time where they put together the airplanes and stuff and they had their headquarters there. Then they moved them to the East Coast. Yeah. And then so you had engineers on one side building the thing. And, and then as you move your headquarters further away, one of the things that happens is management and people who are power seeking want to be where the decisions are made. And so what happens is you start to get people who move from there to then to there. And so you get a 2000 mile separation between the people building the profit product and the people selling and managing and trying to you know say what it is. And I think that's one of the many reasons they've had so many problems is they're an extremely fractured company in that regard. Yeah, these canes that'd be fixed. Worst case scenario, you know, Boeing sells off divisions to other stuff, you know, they, they, they sell off divisions or whatever and focus on other things. And, you know, we see you will see how long the reputation is it does it is it is another year or two of boeing jokes but you know when you have apps that tell you if you're on a boeing plane or not even though there's an argument to be made you're probably safer on a boeing plane now because of the scrutiny and attention towards maintenance schedules but it's, but it's, you know i mean i i guess you wonder about the 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 you know where you are in terms of the the cycles that Boeing moves in, which Boeing does not move in a quarter to quarter cycle. They move in like an every five years to decade cycle of the kind of contracts that they get. And uh, among them building planes and dealing with the government. So I, I, I don't know how much damage is enough damage to really matter. Cause they aren't a normal company like that. But at the same time, you have to wonder, you know, especially in a more competitive environment, especially in, 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 in the, in the rocketry world, you know, when, when is this is too risky and it's coming at too high a price? Cause, cause they're still at the top of the leaderboard in terms of what they're charging. Yeah. Good question. We'll see. Yeah. See what happens next. Mm. So, uh, big, big AI news. A lot of things happened in the last few days, last week. And, um, we'll start with, I think the biggest news is meta released a model, what their newest Llama 3 model, and it's a 405 billion parameter model. 405 billion parameter gives you an idea of sort of the roughly the size of this. Yeah. And on the leaderboards, it's scoring comparatively GPT-4, you know, and, and maybe better in some areas. And so, so they've got, and, you know, they've created this I, 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 leading I, model. I, 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 just so I'm processing the story correctly, uh, this is a case where uh, uh, efficiency is now allowing them to take the uh, what used to be a, a lot of compute and make it run uh, on a, a smaller device. No, not not yet. So what what basically what this is the significance is is it's 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 I'm going to use the term and it's not truly but it is a, a directionally open source. What the deal is, Meta created their own. You know now you have. Google had their own sort of roughly GPT-4 level model with, with uh, their models. You had Anthropic had a GPT-4 level model with Claude and Claude Sonnet 3.5, which you know was, is a very, very good model. Now, Meta has said, hey, has announced, has released GPT, or excuse me, uh, 
Llama 3.1, 405. So it's still a very big model, and I'll get to, get to the particulars of that, but it's a GPT-4 class model. So they've now released this, and it's under a very permissive license, meaning if you're you know, under, you have to agree to not use it for certain harms and stuff like that. But if, you are, if we had our own AI company, we could use this model right now and train on top of it. They're also allowing you to use the outputs from it to train smaller models. So a very, very generous, very, very big positive boon for AI in that they've now released an open, we'll use the term open source. There's quote unquote, quote unquote, yeah, quote unquote, quote, unquote, quote, unquote, quote, quote uh, certainly more open, open, open AI and Anthropic does in Google, but they've released effectively an open source model that is GPT-4 class. So, so I, any company. Can I saw this when it was announced by the Dominican barber that has inhabited the body of Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, and it, it, <laughs> it very much seems like they are they are doing some really, really interesting things, not only in AI. And I do want to talk about the specifics of this model, but I also want to talk about something else that I have seen. And I just saw on your Twitter, Maine, that you made a, a comment about. And that is the concept of model collapse by way okay. of data that is generated from other models to train other models. For, for folks, and correct me, Andrew, if I am off base here, but the general theory of model collapse is that the only thing that creates good models is actual data that is created from uh, uh, human beings and that the more you train from other models, there is a copy of a copy of a copy problem that will eventually make them degrade. Yeah, well, model that and that can cause model collapse. So think of model collapse where all of a sudden you have a model and all of a sudden it's just doing gibberish or it's starting to perform less. Yeah, and a lot of things can cause that. So Nature published a paper by some researchers who said, "Hey, uh, we've run the test and what using quote they talk about like synthetic data that is using outputs from other models. You keep doing it and you get model collapse. The model starts to fail. Well, here is the problem. The the method they use to do this, nobody is doing. That is not the way you create synthetic data. And somebody just did a deeper dive into this, and it's worse than I thought. The paper is really not good, in my opinion. In is, nature? Wow. So rigorous nature's been. I, well, in theory, they were supposed to be the good ones. But anyhow, so what they did was exactly what you said, is they used one model. to They gave it a bunch of Wikipedia articles and had it rewrite those articles and took those articles, fed it to a new model, a new model. It's what we call the telephone game. Yeah, I didn't need to do a bunch of research to tell you the telephone game ends up distorting information. That's not how you use synthetic data. That that is like a really that would be a a graduate student's idea of 2019, you know, of how to do this sort of thing, which apparently is what turned out to be. So, <laughs> and and even and one is one is the way you could do you know synthetic data is the idea of data that's produced from some other source, either through an AI model, it could be through some, some like a physics engine, there are other things. When I did my Shark Week uh, project, I built a shark detector and I needed a lot of images of great white sharks. I could only find so many images of great white sharks from certain angles. So I built a 3D model of great white shark and then took, put it into you know, a, a 3D environment and took tons of images of, made all these synthetic images of a, of a fake shark, then supplemented that with real images and I built a way better shark detector. And that's, you know, and this is something I did five years ago. Yeah. Over five years ago, that 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 was you understood that. If you if you if you look at the process, you go like, oh, okay, so you're taking this new synthetic data and you're doing this. Okay, are you adding the previous data? Well, no, they're not actually using the original data. They're getting rid of the original articles and stuff. Well, when you include those, you find out you get the model performance great. It does really well. They were basically trying to create a situation that nobody does yeah. to make a point that nobody really disagrees with about the idea that 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 poor quality data leads to poor quality data but it makes the headlines it makes the tech journalism uh, you know my i was going to put tweet out thing it's like if you if your understanding of the state of ai is from reading news headlines or research papers you're 18 months behind or more you're just not going to know where things are also journals and researchers have a rush to publish and to make big claims to say look where this fails look there's there's real failings i could get into the stuff what these models can't do the jagged frontier and stuff but anyhow long story short uh, the the way there are a lot of different ways to create synthetic data microsoft created their phi models of the, these models they have a model that's called like phi 3 which scores 
performs as good as model twice its size, much bigger. And most of that, not most, I don't know the ratio, but a ton of that data was synthetic data. And so we have examples of models using synthetic data that actually are half the size. They're outperforming other models. So it's just you know, another example of let's put out a paper, let's write a bunch of cool headlines, and let's tell everybody. A thing I mean, here's, here's the thing, though, is that I think we're in a fascinating place with coverage of AI from a journalistic perspective because I don't even know if the average person knows what the hell that means. Like, I think that that yeah. was that that is a point that is made. I, that is I, a, I, I can 100 percent validate the question that like the average person, it is it is now exhausting for me to explain the fundamentals of AI. It reminds me of the late 90s explaining the imp, imp, all people in the music biz knew were that MP3s were somehow bad. And I'm like, no, they're just incredibly efficient at compression and they do this and they allow you more opportunities than you've ever had. What if you were your own label, et cetera, et cetera. I am having to have that conversation so many times about AI that I just, I, I just sort of, I, I'm, I'm at the point where I just, I just let it wash past me. But this is, this is even beyond, and I guess that's, that's part of the issue is that we are at a point now where AI is something that is culturally consequential. It is financially consequential. And yet what theoretically, if nature wanted to be in a place where they were actually leading on research with AI, they would, I don't know, do something interesting as opposed to running this really fakakta uh, experiment where they don't even try to use the best, you know, uh, practices for, for this. You know, because I, I guess the, 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 the concept of synthetic data is something that I know from somebody that has to talk to a, a, a large daily tech audience with daily tech news show once a week. I don't know how much I need to do an explainer on what synthetic data is. Uh, I assume I have to do something every time I mention it. So I don't even know from, from the nature perspective, like wh who are they even really speaking to aside from a, a general sense of AI panic that it's like, Oh, AI is a bubble. AI is a bubble. And now we know because look, everyone's doing this and that means it's a bubble. The, the, the problem is several fold. The thing I said before about academia being sometimes 18 months behind, that's, that's really true. It, and that was one of the things that was, for me, was I would see a paper come out, hey, there's a new technique. I'm like, you mean the thing that's been sitting in my notepad for 12 months? <laughs> like, you'd be like, it, you'd see this stuff and realizing, one, there's the purpose of scholarship, and two, but also that rush to publish. And that's been a problem. A big criticism has been made, and I think papers got a bit better. They do the generic chat GPT, can't do this. Which one? 3.5, 4.0, 4.0, 4.0 mini. And you know that immediately it's a bad paper. I'll tell you what was, I'll tell you the biggest sin of this paper, though, uh, was, let me pull this up here. And and I, I, I did not fully attack it for this. I just left that as sort of like a little a, a little side note in my comment was, they ended by saying uh, the very opening thing is stable diffusion revolutionized image creation from descriptive text. Stable diffusion came out a year, a year after Dolly, a yeah. year, not a week, not a month, 12 months after Dolly came out and revolutionized, you know, image. Creation. So their first sentence, I read this. I'm like, somebody's got an agenda here. You know, somebody's got a thing or something they want to say or whatever, because it was a very, was a very, very weird thing. And I'm like, that nature, let your first sentence is not true. It's just not true. And or it, it, it could be true in the most subjective the, sense the, possible. There is an awful lot of what, uh, Michael Crichton called the 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 Gelman effect, where it's like a, a, you know physicist Gelman would would open up the newspaper, read some stuff, and say, "Well, this is clearly garbage because this is in my wheelhouse and none of this makes sense." But then he curiously would turn the page and then just believe the next thing you read. Like like I I I I, think I, 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 I like to call that in in my updated parlance the last week tonight effect. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, <laughs> uh, but I would say, Brian, but we're all supposed to be physicists here. That's the thing is that is that I'm looking at AI researchers open up with an ahistorical account of this and then go into a route. And I feel like it to me, it feels like it was somebody's pet project. They said, cool, let's do it. They all signed their names on so they can put out a paper about this. Uh, 
you know, I do work now with some researchers and stuff because of my outspokenness, we'll say on Twitter, I now get people who reach out to me and say, what can we do? And I would encourage them, uh, not just to me, but reach out to other people about stuff and say, because the problem is they're often in their own little bubbles, but but I'll give you a couple other big pieces of news. So uh, Meta releasing that huge model is 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 going to be a, a game changer, absolute game changer. It is going to bring up issues of safety, stuff like this. They spent a lot of time on the model to make sure that it's not going to show you how to make, you know, meth and all that. And it took, I think, four hours for somebody to figure out how to jailbreak it to get yeah, it to do that. Prudes. So I think, I think, yeah, I think Zuckerberg is going to be in a position where it could be, you know, next year sitting in front of a Senate committee having to explain why he didn't use the same sort of protocols to protect the model as others do. And there is a very vigorous debate between what makes us more safe, whatever. I tend to be more of the open source side and whatever on that and and whatnot. And I don't think we're worried about the right things and stuff like that. But I will say that there is a discussion to be said, you know, like Sam Altman put out, you know, he had an article that came out, um, an opinion piece about, you know, AI safety and stuff. So the thing we need to be concerned about is, you know, making sure that we don't lose our edge to China. And of yeah. course, some AI safety people are like, why are you trying to make a cold war between us and China? It's like, hey, dudes, where the heck have you been for yeah. like the last 50 years? It was just this, this like, ah, Sam stoking a race with China. That dude, that race started. It's gone. It's already going. You yeah, know, just, I, I, just... I, I, I don't know if we want to chase this threat or not, but like the chase the, this dragon. Uh, this, yeah. uh, the 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 question of of uh, an AI space race with China. I, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe I have an overly simplified uh, understanding of the situation, but basically uh, China does a little bit too much state control over its media, and so essentially all of the data that it has is a little bit uh, synthesized. And, and as we were just talking about, syn synthetic data is not the best thing to train uh, AI on. We, we we can get into theoretical limitations that could be put in place there. They do have specific regulations about these models that are supposed to embrace socialism stuff. I, I demonstrated earlier the latest best model they have, DeepSeek, which is a great model, a really, really good model. Um, I got it to explain to me what happened at Tiananmen Square, which those models are never, ever supposed to do. Um, so clearly the data, the, there's a lot more data in there than maybe the state wants, but they are very fully encouraging AI development. And one of the things we've talked about is that, uh, TikTok, as Justin's pointed out, worked out, worked in part because Western companies would say, man, you know, it'd be great if we could catalog all these videos, but like hundreds of thousands of videos, it's just not feasible to have people do it. And China's like, oh, have hundreds of thousands of people catalog videos. <laughs> I have it done by Tuesday. And TikTok was able to build an incredible recommendation system by having people look at hundreds of thousands of videos, millions of videos mm -hmm. and cataloging them and do that. When you come to creating AI data, that is a really useful thing. It's one thing to say, hey, I've taken all of the GitHub repository for code, but oh yeah, I've got, you know, I've got a thousand, you know, computer science majors from all these polytechnic institutes around China who are going to spend the next three weeks augmenting this data and classifying this stuff. That's a huge boom. That is a huge, and you can get. You I mean, get when you, when you, when, yeah, when, when, when you can, for pennies on the dollar, get a thousand uh, uh, undergrads in a basement ripping heaters and categorizing things, like that is, that is a, a an advantage that China has. They have disadvantages. Uh, like like you pointed out, there's only so far you're going to be able to get in terms of mass adoption without the government uh, uh, sticking their nose into it. But they've they've got. You know, they've 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 got things that we don't. There's nobody. There's no amount of money, no scalable amount of money in America that you can put these same kind of bodies would, to do manual labor like they can in China. Would 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 it be an overly redundant or uh, 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 reductive uh, understanding for me to say that? Uh, like it seems like. Um, the uh, I, I I think of a uh, Lysenkoism. Uh, basically, it, it, it was it was fake genealogy that was approved by the Soviet Empire at the time. But uh, because he was saying the right things, everybody pretended like the crops were going to grow super great. Uh, it was bad science from the uh, top down, uh, but it was the right science that was politically correct. 
uh, w- uh, if, if I'm understanding everything correctly now, it sounds like let's grant that China themselves know that all of their previous data sets are corrupted because of their heavy, heavy hand of censorship. However, they have incredible numbers to generate new data. Like uh, here in America, our, most of our data sets kind of end at September from a couple of years ago, uh, because after that, we don't know how much of them are AI generated. Uh, whereas China could, you know, give us two weeks, shrug your shoulders, we'll create a whole new data set. Um, is, is, is that correct I mean, it, or, or where, where, no, I mean, where it, am I astray? I mean, I mean, no, I mean, like, like uh, China, that when it comes to data, like we're, we still use up to the date data sets and stuff, like, because we have ways of knowing sources and stuff like in, in nobody, no real serious a lab is just taking a web scraper, all the web scrape data and just throwing it in willy nilly without kind of looking at what it is or using other metrics to look at it. Um, and from China, you know, China has the advantage of all the publicly available American corp, like there's a thing called Cop and Crawl. They can take all the publicly available data that's been used for training for American models. They can go then take all of this Chinese text, all these Chinese textbooks, all these Chinese other examples. They have a ton of Chinese data. They can do it and then go augment it. Like I said, like I said, yeah. And then the big factor is, yeah, then have humans go in there and data labelers go in and prop. That is a very big, one of the biggest, you know, one of the most successful AI companies to scale AI. And they're, they just data labeling and like little, literally having people go in and label data and go and do that. So they have, I would say that they have a cost advantage and that their ability to use humans to label data because they can use Chinese data, they can use American data. They have uh, their, remember too, is it from a, a theoretical framework too, is that every major lab, uh, you know, there is a huge interplay of people back and forth between America and China with knowledge and exper- expertise and capabilities. You know, the vast majority of researchers in labs who are Chinese you know, working in America are very loyal to what they're doing, but you get a small percentage of people, you're going to get secrets and stuff are going to go out. And that's another thing too, is that like, it, it, be, we, there's probably not a thing that a major American lab knows that the Chinese labs don't know. So um, w- would there be value in uh, a Chinese company uh, training on a less censored set of data than their than than Chinese available, or 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 do they have the raw data? Like uh, fr- from my understanding, there's an increasing uh, demand for raws. Like uh, for example, you know whatever uh, uh, scam school, scam nation, modern rogue, mm-hmm. uh, uh, all of that stuff. Anything on YouTube, it's already been scraped. However, for every frame of that content, there there exists out there for the hoarders uh, who have it, uh, tons and tons of of, of uh, film uh, behind the scenes of like uh, no no this is actually what happened not the not the curated version that you saw on the television uh, is. Uh, do, does China have any problem of getting that a- getting access to that I, I would, to that raw authentic data? I, I would I would say you know not to answer for Andrew, but I think that they do train on training on the data. I don't think is the issue for them. I think that it's publishing the models to a point where they're not going to have old uh, uh, Johnny Law poking their poking their nose into things. Uh, they have a huge video industry, a you know, huge, huge video industry. They have access to that. But again, I think the thing that really makes the biggest difference is I could take a thousand hours of rough footage and go train a model on it. But if I can take a thousand hours of rough footage and have a dozen people go through and write text descriptions in detail about what's going on in every frame about the video, that then gives me a real advantage because it's not just the video. I want to know if you have somebody like, oh, yeah, a penguin walks to the left side of the screen to the right side of the ring, he's got a funny expression on his face. Da, da, da. And we've seen uh, there's a Kling is a, uh, a Chinese model they put out. I don't think it's quite Sora quality, but it's very good. And we're seeing that. And I think a big 
one of the things but, that but sort of I, I i i it looks like you're pulling something up right now um the uh, uh if, if i'm understanding you correctly it's like the more humans that touch it uh the 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 more superior the quality of the data becomes is that right you yeah you can get a lot the more you know about the data the more value you can get out of it and so if you can take if you can have a bunch of people tell you about things if you're trying to recreate what a human would know then having a bunch of humans look at a thing and tell you about it's a real advantage uh, and you want to know what else is a real advantage? Going to patreon.com slash weird things at patreon.com slash weird things. You can support this very program. Head on over there right now. Patreon.com slash weird things. So other two big pieces of AI news. Go. Uh, so you have you have Facebook. Meta releases this big, huge 405, 405 parameter model. Uh, substantially capable. GPT-4 rivaling maybe better in some search situations. OpenAI released last week. I don't know if you saw this. I think it was uh, last week was GPT-40 Mini, right? And basically what they did is they took their GPT-40 model and they figured out, like, hey, we think we can build a much more efficient version of this and meaning it's, it's much, much cheaper to run. Now, to give you an example of GPT-40, we measure things in millions of tokens, okay? When... GPT-3 first came out, it was six cents per thousand tokens, six cents per thousand tokens, right? GPT-4.0, which is their current big, you know, capable model, is $15 per million tokens. And to give you a comparative example is by that standard, you know, like it's it's substantially improved. Let me give you a, let me go and do the math here. Um, uh, so well, GPT-4.0 a robot that could do it way fast. I know, I know. I just got to figure out how to ask the right question. So five zero six. It is it is fascinating where uh, that we've entered an age where uh, the most useless of degrees used to be, you know, any of the humanities, the ability to write and speak well. But uh, it, 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 and I do still believe that that uh, you're bullish uh, and correct to say, but you should know how to code, but we're entering a strange era where uh, 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 where the ability to vividly explain what you want has extraordinary value. Oh yeah, well, I, I, I would say that, I mean, you guys know privately how many doors have been opened up for me because of the fact that I do both, right? Yeah. You know, and, 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 and good enough good enough in both of those you know is is a is a wonderful skill to have not be expert or genius but good enough in those things all of a sudden you get a lot of opportunity out there so if comparatively speaking when gpd3 launched it would have been 60 dollars per million tokens 60 dollars per million tokens for gpd3 gpd4 oh is 15 dollars per million tokens right so you're talking about you know a reduction of you know it's cost 25 percent right which is a phenomenal considering the capabilities. GPT-4 is a 10 times more capable model. It's way more capable, right? Well, GPT-4 Mini just came out and for most tasks, it's perfectly useful. It is 60 cents per million tokens, Good 60 Lord. cents, okay? You're talking about a thousand fold cost reduction over where we were GPT, a thousand fold cost reduction of what that costs now. And when I when I first before I went to work for OpenAI, I was going to release an app. It was like a chat app. It was able to do you talk. It was a you know message. It was basically talk kind of like a chat GPT thing. You could go search the web, do a lot of stuff. I had to use. I had to try to get it to work with only two thousand tokens, two thousand word limit each time. Figured out how to do it. wasn't great, but it was a little bit slow. Um, but the cost was the most prohibitive thing. It was going to cost me. I couldn't give away a free tier. Yeah. When you're talking about sixty cents. And that's for output tokens, by the way. Input tokens are just 15 cents. So your prompt, your prompt instructions, whatever, it's 15 cents per million tokens. You can have a really huge instruction set. That is almost too cheap to meter. You just start thinking about applications you can do with that. You can create a free tier. You know, somebody did an article. It's like, yeah, you could now do ad supported AI, which, you know, makes me cringe a little bit. But 60 cents per million tokens is dirt uh, th cheap. Th th this is one of the things, I think it was in Zero to One, the Peter Thiel book, uh, that uh, he talked about um, uh, build a business assuming that a certain resource will start the business today knowing that a resource is expensive, but assuming 
and you got to pick correctly, that eventually it's pretty much free. And so like Google, for example, it, it was data storage. You know, they, 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 they built mm -hmm. their business based on the idea that it's like, well, eventually data storage is going to be pretty much free, but let's act as though it's free today and see where that leads us. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it, it's, yeah, the Google example is a great one. Google just started giving you mail and all these other services and stuff. I guess with and Amazon, they realized, it would be what, uh, AWS or? What, what's that? Uh, with a Amazon data services, uh, their their compute power uh, just gets cheaper and servers. cheaper. Servers, yeah. Yeah, they, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, part, yeah, part of it was they realized was that a, a, a team of 12 people monitoring 10,000 servers wasn't different than having them monitoring 100,000 servers. That was a thing. The challenge for Google was, is when they started creating all kinds of new projects and applications, that became, that's why they shut stuff down all the time. It's not because they don't have services, they don't have people to do it. Where Amazon's like, well, we can just keep scaling buckets infinitely and not have to increase people that much. Um, so, and by the way, too, you can use what's called batch processing, where if you say, hey, I have tasks, like I have, maybe I have, you know, I have a, a ton of things I want translated or whatever, and I don't need them done right away. I'm willing to wait 24 hours. If you do that, your cost is, 30 cents per million tokens. It's just insane how cheap this is now. And I knew cost would go down. I don't think that I expected at this point the cost would be where it is right now. Yeah. I don't think I thought that. But um, the thing is, once you start to really think about this resource, so we had the crowd strike issue happen, right? Where we had this, you know, humongously problematic issue of an update gets pushed through there and whatnot. Part of the problem. Uh, by the way, I, I only peripherally paid attention to that. So if you want to summarize the 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 that whole issue, I would appreciate okay. it. So if you there are different vendors that provide software to protect your computer from intrusions and from hacking and whatever, and CrowdStrike's one of them. Okay. Now, in order for it to work, uh, it has to have kernel level access, root level access to your entire machine which you trust CrowdStrike, you say, okay, but that means that it can push through updates and do stuff without you having to click okay or whatever. You can default it and you can say, no, I have to approve it. But most people just say, yeah, automatically install these updates. And so what it means is CrowdStrike has the capability, if you have a Windows machine with it running, to basically go change your operating system to, in theory, to make it safer and protect it because somebody finds a new vulnerability. We're like, oh, this thing's not right. We need to put a patch for this, whatever. Well, what happened was, is CrowdStrike hugely trusted and installed the millions of machines around the world. Somebody put in, pushed through an update that was basically like a bunch of empty zeros or whatever. And it was a completely faulty update. The problem was it affected a part of the Windows operating system in such a way you could not get it to, to boot up again. You had to actually basically recycle the machine like seven times and then manually delete the file to get Oof. it off of there. It was a catastrophic thing. And, you know, Microsoft got a lot of blame, but Microsoft said, hey, listen, um, we don't like giving people root level access. We don't want to do it. But the European Commission said, because we have a monopoly, we have to let any vendor have access to root level if the user says yes. And so... They're saying like, we don't have a choice. You know, if you if you say I grant you root level, that means you can go do this. And they're saying, hey, this is an e, you know European Commission issue. But uh, you know, I, on, on on the consumer level, this was felt in it, this was a travel related story. Is that is that oh, right? Every, not, it was not everything. Just everything. Everything. Okay. All right. Travel travel became a big thing because it's the summer months, and uh, uh, those are very telegenic and emotional stories. I, I had, you know, I had a, a bill come up I was supposed to pay and I went to go click and I got a server error because CrowdStrike took down their server. And it'll be interesting to see. And we're going to be seeing the effects of this for several weeks and several months for this too. Yeah, payment processing that somebody's, yeah, that affected me. Like I went to go click, I'm like, man, I can't make this payment right now because their system's down. So I was going to make the argument too, is that like one, there are people like, well, with AI, we're going to get a lot more hacks and stuff like this. People are going to use AIs to attack systems. Yes, they are. But also, imagine if before you install the CrowdStrike thing, you have a thing, a gateway that says, hey, wait a second. Yeah. I want to take a look at this first. I want to I want to see if I have a problem with this. And so when you're talking mm. about the cost of this going down, the, a Frontier GPT-40 level model, so cheap, 
so cheap that you could basically put it having monitoring port traffic. That's exciting. Yeah. Uh, uh, what one last thing here? Uh, on, oh, we got on one the, more, one more, I, one more big. I, deal. I, I wonder if it's okay. the same story. What is the story? Okay. Uh, so uh, OpenAI has a reputation of, and I, I, I am uh, there. Uh, I hang out with my friends at OpenAI on a regular basis, <laughs> and they're doing great things. And they showed, and I remember they did the voice. They showed us the amazing voice interaction thing, and there was no controversy came with that whatsoever. No, nope. none at all. No, nope. uh, and audio listeners, ability- like it's worth tuning in live sometimes just to see this moment. <laughs> go ahead, yeah. go on, go <laughs> yeah. on. There was no controversy about any of the voice anything like that. We'll just move right past. Uh, but they said, hey, we have a feature. They demoed a feature, showed a feature like this, whatever. And OpenAI has a habit of generally, once they show a thing, it being available very soon. Yeah. In the voice feature, they showed it, and then, hey, when are we getting this? It is not available. Not available yet. Now they're doing a limited rollout, whatever this. There are OpenAI, because they're a leader, they have a lot of, they get a lot of scrutiny. And so I would say that there's a concern of all of a sudden, well, there's there's an unpredictable feature. I'm guessing. I don't know of any internal knowledge on this at all. But... Oh, you know, we we they sometimes have to spend more time testing these things because of the scrutiny on them. Also, often sometimes deploying with like a real time voice interaction thing too. You might say, "I'll use a lot more traffic." So technically, they do plan to roll it out, and so then they announce something else new, and of course, people are like, "Oh, cool! We're still waiting for the last thing." But I think this will be a little bit easier to release, and, and that is OpenAI Search GPT, which. I found fascinating. This broke while I was on Daily Tech News Show yesterday. Uh, and I found it very, very interesting. Because, Brian, if you can bring it up. Yeah, sure. The Wait, it's it's out? out? It is, no, it is no. waitlisted for 100,000 people. Get on the waitlist and, and you might uh, eventually stop waiting. But I think this is going to roll out faster. Mostly because uh, it's it's a fairly simple UI. It's a very clean UI, and it is something very, very interesting because it's, you know, at least the the stuff that I've seen, it's a lot of very, very clean links for things. And uh, uh, that is, you know, you've seen a lot of uh, big players, specifically Microsoft and Google, who have big footprints in AI. They've been trying to figure out what is modern search what do people want with search in general? What do they want uh, uh, with AI enhanced search? And what do they want or what what do we need in terms of ad placement and sales? And I think search GPT is an opportunity if it's clean and it's helpful and it works. Good God. This- Would I love just an AI enhanced link dump of, of stuff and not just a gigantic pile of random nonsense stapled onto my uh, 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 my, my search results. Uh, quick question. Is there anything interactive I should be seeing on this website? No, this is, uh, okay. you, 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 nobody can, uh, uh, touch the mango right now. Okay. Except for the 10,000 people that have been waitlisted. The, um, I, 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 I have no doubt that it's, if, if, if it's around the corner from coming out, I have no doubt that it'll be good. Uh, but, but, uh, uh, chat GPT is almost synonymous with made up wrong stuff at this point. And so if what you're seeking is the truth, it'll be interesting to see what their strategy is. But that's, to, but that's, that's that. the, 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 the point that I'm making is that if it's basically just surfacing links, then you're, you're not running into the problem that Google and Microsoft have fallen into where they're trying to augment their search with, a essentially a chat GPT or, or, or some sort of large language model output based on your query. It, uh, it, uh, it, it is instead, a bit weird. Like, like, like it's, they, almost, yeah, they, they, they are saying these are different products. Chat GPT. And, I, and Brian, I'm going to push back. I don't know. I would say early on, certainly went about chat GPT making stuff up. That was when 2% were paying attention. When I, when I talk to normies who use chat GPT and stuff, and also remember too, and, and that's also pre it using actually searching the web and providing data in there. That's gone down. Like that's just really kind of gone down where like so many people use it in places 
high trust things now maybe more than it should. Yeah, but. and, and uh, I, I, I see the contradiction in my own uh, uh, take where it's like I can't both complain about how nobody understands AI and also complain that everybody understands that AI sometimes will make stuff up or whatever. Yeah, uh, I, but that, but that, to your point, that's going to be a big thing. That's going to be the scrutiny on it because people were looking, scrutinizing the examples. They said, "Well, it asked for August and it gave a September result and stuff." And like, I was like, I don't know if that was like a a level fail of use glue on pizza, um, which, if it's non toxic glue, by the way, totally fine. Would be fine. Have okay. you have you? And so the 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 one of the things OpenAI has been making a bunch of deals with like Reuters and other news agencies. So that's what they want to do is basically have them be a first party, which is going to be interesting. Rather than historically the way it was, hey, we scraped your website, we found this article, and we pushed this through in our news feed. Google approach, OpenAI is like, hey, Reuters, yeah, no, you'll people look up a thing, it'll pop up a Reuters article because we're paying you and we have an agreement to do this, which I think is a very different strategy. Um, the it's, biggest comparison, have you guys ever used perplexity? Uh, uh, I have not, but before we jump over to that topic, uh, uh, it, it feels like uh, there's going to be kind of an organic revenue sharing opportunity similar to the way YouTube works, where it's like, we're going to cut you in right now for a slice of this made up future pie. And as the pie grows, you will benefit and you will be very happy. Uh, it's similar to AdSense is what it feels like. Uh, but, but well, right now, these are deals that they are just making for their product. They are just like cutting checks for the Reuters output. Like yeah. that, that is that like this isn't that, I mean, right now, open AI is not in an advertising marketplace. Who knows if in the future that will be something that they do, but uh, the, they are paying out a lot of money for data that they are going to do whatever they want with, be it training on the models, but also for stuff that is coming out. If they're like, Hey, look, we're going to showcase you in this search function. Well, if, if I, if this is me guessing, uh, from a very distant third place in, on our panel. Uh, but I would imagine, let's say you happen to have, let's say you have a YouTube channel with raw data of, uh, I don't know, 10 years of doing nothing but blowing up a Camaro in a quarry. And uh, uh, depending on how busy the marketplace is for searches of, I need an image of a Camaro blowing up in a quarry. Well, then guess what? You're the king of that. Uh, I, I, I would imagine that those partnerships, now, you ain't going to be no Reuters, but you'll be kingpin of the, of that little corner of it similar to how there are interesting corners of youtube where there are various kingpins through adsense is uh, i guess what i'm assuming uh yeah i don't know economic models what they're going to be doing i think that'll be up, much up for debate and i was brought up perplexity because perplexity is a paid search Perplexity, uh, one of the founders of that were, was a former OpenAI guy. Um, Perplexity has a great product. They're doing really cool things there. And this was, looks like it is definitely a direct competition to them. Will the model be ad revenue, pay revenue, all sorts of other things, TBD. Um, but it's certainly going to be the idea of the opt-in search engine is an interesting idea. And the idea of like, oh, I, I want my data here because I like the way that it's handled or the way I like the reciprocity there. Um, it's going to be very interesting space. I'm excited. I, I've used perplexity a little bit. I'm not, I never felt too super, super sticky for me. I never found a use for it. You know, search GPT I'm excited about partially because I'll be able to yell at the people working on it for features. <laughs> Um, there's nothing like this. being in the Slack and being able to say, get, add this. So, uh, let me ask you this, man. If you are in Mountain View, headquarters of Google, is this a big deal, a little deal, or no deal? Search GPT. Oh, um, it is not. It is not a little deal because yeah. Google, obviously, AI assisted search is a big, big area what that form means, whatever. It is absolutely a, a, a thing they didn't want to have happen and now it's happening. Opening eye, if you read the language, it's great though. Like they're, 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 you could tell them like, uh, let me read you the July 25th, 2024, 
Search GPT prototype. We're testing Search GPT, a temporary prototype of new AI search features that gives you fast and timely answers, clear relevant sources. They're very much trying to be very specific, like, hey, yeah, it's just a thing. We had an idea. We want to try temporary, temporary, because when we did chat GPT, which was a temporary prototype, yeah. that ended up being a longer thing, but we never used that language. So interesting and open AI's language. But if you're if you're in Mountain View, you know, AAK at Google, you are concerned. I I was on DTNS. I asked that very same question to the panel, and I think that we are, you know, the the general consensus amongst us learned pundits is, uh, yeah, this is. Who knows whether or not it will be everything that it could be, but this is one of those potentially big days in the history of Google, like because we we've, we've talked a lot about. Warning signs, missed platforms, missed opportunities, slow out of the gate, blah, 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 blah. That's all what it is. That's all possibly you're not going to get to the future as fast as you could. The golden goose that lays the golden eggs is sold on search results. An erosion of search results is a material problem for Google. It is an existential for real problem. It. it uh, Google is in a very weird place right now where if what I want to do is spend money, it's the best thing in the world. I say, I want to spend money. And it, uh, whoever pays the most for the ads, right there at the top of the results, I get exactly what I want. Everything else, I, I don't even know what I use Google for. Uh, news, it's like, uh, yes, six years ago, I looked up Rick and Morty. Why are you still telling me news about Rick and Morty stuff? Uh, it, it's fascinating. Yeah, I will. I will tell you the thing that uh, the the I I like. Well, here's the thing I like about Search GPT. If if OpenAI decides they want to make that an ad supported product, that's fine. I'd like to keep ads out of Chat GPT and keep that free. But if Search GPT is ad supported, it's fine. This is a thing that's got to be terrifying to Google. Who is OpenAI's big new partner now? Well, I mean, we know Microsoft and we know that they yeah, have a closer we, we, relationship with Apple. Yeah. Apple, right? So the default search engine in Safari is Google. Google pays Apple approximately $20 billion a year. Mm -hmm. uh, what happens if search GPT is a preferred thing? You know, is there a model where all of a sudden opening eye says, yeah, we're, we're going to build a better search product and will pay the tax, do whatever. I don't know. I mean, I'm just saying like, that's the thing that the thing that's really should be really scary for Google is if OpenAI just gets really serious and wants to go after mobile search and wants to be able to go do that. No, um, no one has come this hard at their core business with this amount of money behind them. I think that yeah. would be, I mean, Microsoft came at them at a point where Microsoft was in a very different place and Bing has been a, a, a an interesting product, uh, uh, but not a a generally competitive one. Uh, this is new tech, and what I was very interested in yesterday was how link centric it was. That it was not trying to be a different version of ChatGPT because if you look at where both Bing and Google have gone, is like let's add another tile to search. We already have news and we have weather and we have shopping that are dynamically gener uh, 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 generated along with links. Now let's also add a LLM tile. And uh, uh, it looked different and, and it looked clean and it made me very excited to get off the wait list. Uh, but also, and above anything else, OpenAI, bring back Sky. Can we knock it off? <laughs> Can we knock it off? She had her time. That woman in New York had her time. She filed a dumb lawsuit. Just bring back Sky, and then no one will get hurt. I, I know that you have a heart out, Justin. Uh, can, can we move into picks and maybe yes. you can go first? You got any picks? Yeah. Uh, 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 Deadpool and Wolverine. Hey, friends, if you want to go see a movie where uh, there's a lot of cursing, and a lot of fourth wall breaking and uh, a lot of fun surprises. Then uh, go see Deadpool and Wolverine. I, I will say this. 
it was the first time in a very long time that I've watched a Marvel movie that I felt uh, was very excited to serve comic book fans <laughs> and not uh, uh, and and serve movie fans. People, just reward people who liked it. I mean, I guess the last time would be um, the Spider-Man movie, which I similarly thought had some interesting, weird plot decisions as I do with a uh, uh, Deadpool and Wolverine, but uh, boy, a lot of fun and go see it as soon as you can, because there are some really fun surprises that will not be surprises for long. If you're friends with Brian Brushwood. That's so what it's exactly if there's one person, bring, bring if there's up. one person on this panel <laughs> named Andrew Maine, I'm saying just, just uh, hypothetically, just tell your wife that you guys are leaving to the theater immediately after this, and and you're gonna block all calls from Brian until you leave the theater. <laughs> my 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 pick is 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 also the same movie and. Uh, Brian could call 911 and he'd spoil the second act of Deadpool and Wolverine. I'm yeah. just saying, like, there's no place that he could be giving the eulogy at my funeral and he would spoil the second act of the movie. So please, just go. <laughs> yes. Uh, that is my pick. That is the only thing I will say about him. Is that it is also my pick. <laughs> All right. Uh, my pick is... I had made a comment and I said that I don't know what my next phone is going to be, but whatever it is, it's going to have to have chat GPT built in as the default voice assistant. And I give you the oops. Nothing phone. Hey, Whoa. there you see main screen right there. Message chat GPT hop right into conversation mode. If you're using the, their, uh, their earbuds, Okay, you can just tap, you can set to just tap it and just write into a conversation with ChatGPT. What? Now, how much would you pay for this? Uh, I, I, a lot. I, I, well, the, the big payment would be, of course, giving up, you know, the safety of the Apple environment uh, to a un, uh, an unknown to me environment called the nothing Why, phone. I, well, it's and I mean it's 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 Android, but like I see, I have two phones. I have my iPhone, and I always have a back, I always have a backup phone. So I have a backup Android phone. So this is my new backup Android phone. Two hundred dollars for the phone, and fifty bucks for their earbuds. Which this little dial, by the way, on there, you see that that actually controls the volume. So you're two hundred fifty bucks all in. Two hundred fifty bucks all in for this, and it's slick. And it looks slick. Yeah, it, it's not, you know, you're not, it's not going to, the it's the the chip in there, some weird chip that I've never heard of before, but it's fine. And for using it to talk to ChatGPT and do that stuff, and it's, you know, it's an Android phone. I mean, you for a $200 phone? Yeah. Done. I mean, it's just, it's just, you know, just very cool. And I think that what I love is that, like, listen, I love my iPhone. I love that, but, like, I don't use my, I, I take my camera, I take one photo a month, you know, like I don't, every time I go like now about the camera, like I, I, I'm not utilizing the camera from five years ago, folks. So, uh, I'm really, really, when they tell me what's new, what's cool about the new phone, roll the camera, oh, shut up, just shut up. Okay? <laughs> um, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. If they did an Apple announcement and they could talk about other cool stuff and maybe two minutes on the camera, I would love it. But when it's half an hour, tell me how the camera. This that much is the most beautiful camera we have ever produced. Oh my god, I get it. We, Forty we, we get lenses, <laughs> fifteen thousand sensors harvested from the sensor field. <laughs> the the we, only we thing we bred pixels on pixel, pixels for over seventeen generations. <laughs> They added, you know, they added the ability to do 3D, but of course, that is not what you call ocular distance apart, minor point. Um, to, I have the Apple Vision Pro. I've looked at some 3D videos and stuff, and I'm still like, cool, I'm good. I'm yeah. good. I'm, I'm good here. Um, I'm, I've got enough damn photos for the rest of my life. Yeah. Um, See, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm feeling a little bit of jealousy in the fact that both of you have more autonomy for a simple decision of like, if I announce to my family that we are extracting ourselves from the Apple environment to move to an Android environment, no. uh, that would be, no, he's saying, be, no, he's be, saying be, this be, is his backup. This is his side piece. Phone. Yeah. I get, get. He, this is, this is his, this is his, uh, his, his, his hot girl. I'm, 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 I'm jealous of, the ease with which both of you can. You're, no, he's saying nimble. get your get your two hundred dollar side piece. Yeah, okay. 
Well, yeah, I, I ain't I, I'm saying, yeah, I, I've always, I always actually, I travel with three phones, but um, <laughs> the third phone we don't talk about. Uh, but yeah, I keep, I always keep a backup, you know, backup phone for having that for whatever else. If something happens to my main phone line, whatever. So I have a backup phone and then another phone we don't talk about. All right. Well, I, I, I know Justin has time pressures, so I guess we should uh, wrap it up and then we'll do an extended after uh, things. Sounds good. Uh, in the Gentlemen, meantime, it has been weird. There's a delay, Brian. I know there is a delay. Uh, also, I'm hitting stop now. Bye, guys. Bye. Okay. <laughs> Quality act, everybody. Once no, again, no. We, look, we, we've done great. We've done great. Uh, uh, here, I'll throw on some non copyrighted music. Uh, yeah, I'll send you the files on the things. Uh, I know that both you and I uh, have uh, uh, well trained bladders and are going to run. So yeah. let me turn on. BRB. Monster Cat. There we go. Here's some generic music to keep you occupied while we both go. That's an ad. I didn't mean to click. Whoopsie doodle. I am a tick. My name is Tick. And I'm great. Uh, hooray for me. That's the end. Best of 2023. Sure. Play it. Whatever it is. Oh my god, it's just, it's literally just playing an ad. Okay. Son of a biscuit. I meant to put on the, 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 the whiny, shiny one. The one with way too much high...
treble guitar music. Yo, are you there? Are I'm you muted, Brian. Oh, okay. I'm all right, all right, all right. Uh, it's so funny. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, here, I'm, I'm, I'm going to send you an email right now while I'm thinking about it because otherwise okay. I'll forget. But, um, there's a, uh, uh, Here, I'll, uh, here, I'm just going to text you, um, and then we can start. But it's one of those things where if I don't do it right this minute, I know my floaty brain will just forget. Um, Texting takes a long time. There we go. So I texted you the bulk of the thing and basically um, uh, I want to provide value for people. Uh, if, if you can think of somebody else I should be talking to, let me know. Yeah. Uh, we don't have yeah. to do it now. I, I just, yeah. I, I just realized like every, like it's been three weeks in a row that I, that we've been doing the show and I've thought I should, I should bring this up to Andrew and ask his advice. And then, and this is the one time by golly, I'm taking action on it. <laughs> well, I can tell you, I feel your pain. <laughs> okay. All right. Good. <laughs> well, I mean, no, I feel your pain. Uh, so. Okay. All right. <laughs> uh, uh, it's like, there, 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 uh, there are people who are moochers and there are people who want to provide value. And I've been really good at being a value provider. And now my, my conduit to provide value has been severed and I would like to have it back. <laughs> yeah. I'm saying, I hear you. I'm just saying, I don't know how. Okay. All right. All right. Oh yeah. It's yeah okay all right well we'll talk yeah. If, yeah. If, if 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 that's where we are weirdly that makes me feel much better about things uh, you do not feel do not feel <laughs> you are not alone <laughs> okay, <laughs> you are all right. uh well here well let me count you in and we'll get started on after things there you go three two one and Hello and welcome to the After Things podcast. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Brian Brushwood. Uh, hello, hello. Brian, it Yo. is Friday. It is time for the After Things. Uh, so, so to be honest, Andrew, I really regard this as one of the most sacred. Oh my goodness! Oh, okay, uh, as one of the most sacred times of my entire week because there are very very don't few... let your rabbi hear you saying that uh, okay. <laughs> uh, uh there are very few people who w walk the path that i've walked uh you know of course justin uh, uh god rest his soul uh, he never was on this show uh because he left 
uh, in in you have walked. Oh in. yeah, that guy. Yeah, that guy. Yeah. yeah. Oh jeez. Uh, but 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 the opportunity to metacognate uh, is that is that the right word? Metacognition. <laughs> oh, what kind of show am I am I in for here? Uh, uh, no, 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 no. no. I, 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 I'm no. not saying no. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. the, the opportunity to metacognate on on how is it that the three of us have found ourselves uh, at, 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 at oh, this delightful, whatever. Uh, point is, we live weird lives, my guy, and it's fun to talk about how we got here because I, I'm pretty sure uh, these will sound familiar. You wake up, you do whatever you want. You look, maybe, maybe you notice you do or don't have money. And so you're like, oh, money is low. And then you just decide to invent something before the end of the day to cause money to happen, right? Or you wake up. You it's notice, called Grinder. Yeah. <laughs> 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 like, uh, I, uh, I have no idea how that works or anything like that. So anyway, listen, I apologize. I have, I have no idea. I no, just, it's, oh. it's, 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 it's actually funnier if you don't know. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, but, but, um, it, people who are like working hard, right? Hustling, it's like hustling, right? Well, uh, I, yeah. I, yeah. I, yeah. Hitting the grind. That's what I use grinder and just say, hey. <laughs> I, I don't know how to save this. Um, but my, my point being is uh, I love, I love, love, love this segment of the show. Maybe the most of my entire week because uh, we get to be totally introspective and confess what we have figured out works and doesn't work. What, what is the thing that is working for you lately as an independent creator? Um, number one, uh, Calendly, just having a Calendly link. Somebody says, let's meet, just send them my Calendly link. That is another thing. Cause like, Oh my God, I, that, that's, oh, damn it. Now I'm actually going to have to do that. Uh, cause so I, 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 I will people take who send me Calendly C A L E N D Y. Oh, L Y. Uh, the only people who send me uh, Calendly links, and I'm always annoyed by them, but universally to a person, they're the most successful people I know of. Like, every time I get a Calendly link, I'm like, Ooh, what is this? I have to get in mind to find time with you. Uh, uh, but every single one who uses it is more successful than I am. I... I had, and this is the first time somebody threw a calendar link in my face. I had this, uh, I had the same reaction. I'm like, like, oh, you throwing me like, oh, I'm, so, and then, and then I'm like, get over yourself. And I, I try to phrase it. I'm like, hey, I'd love to meet. Uh, here's my link or send me yours. You know, here, you wonder if you send me your link. If not, here's mine. I try to phrase it because there, it is a weird, it, fe it can feel like a weird flex, but GD, like, the stuff that has come my way, because if I go to a situation, whatever, I meet somebody interesting, whatever, I'm like, hey, here's my link. And then like, and also like, even like normies who I have no intention of working in a business thing or who might just want advice. I'm like, yeah, just call it like, let's have a conversation, whatever. Um, uh, the Calendly link has just been, the opportunities that have come my way because of this have been immense. It's great. Cause so Calendly don't know, for those you don't know, is basically it's a service where you just you take a Google Calendar and you say I'm open these spots. You create booking slots. Could be 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever. And then if you want to meet with somebody, you just send them a link. They open up a link and it can look at their that person's calendar. And if they have Google Calendar and able to show when you have like you know when there's a time that works for whoever. And what's great about it is that it allows it, it makes it so easy because I don't have somebody handling my schedule. And that's one of the things you realize too about really important people. Uh, like I ran into a good friend of mine who handles Sam Altman's schedule and she's one of several people now that handle Sam Altman's schedule because mm -hmm. Sam Altman's got a very busy schedule. There's a lot of things that have to do there. I looked in the mirror. I am not Sam Altman. <laughs> I am not at that level, but I go, what, what are the signs of somebody who's very successful to have extremely efficient time management, extremely efficient time management is one of the patterns of success. I am, I am ready to admit out loud that I have 
for years made the disastrous mistake of just allowing the world to pull me whoever is closest is able to pull me into whatever it is they want me to do or what have you and and that has to end uh i should be at this point uh and and to be honest i, I we we've talked a little bit about um the, uh, on this podcast, uh, uh, I've heard it called the reticular activation system, that sense of like uh, where you feel like you belong. Like, for example, if you're if you perceive yourself as the type of person who makes fifty thousand dollars a year of, of sales, then uh, if you start making too many sales too early in the year, you'll figure out excuses to slow down. And likewise, if all of a sudden it's it's October and you've only made 20,000 of sales, you'll figure out ex you, you, excuses to suddenly hit that 50 b before the end of the year. Uh, I have up until today perceived myself as the kind of person who was undeserving of being a Calendly person. But but you, I, I, I believe you, this is a transformative moment. Like, by golly, I don't get to have other crabs just pull me back down in the bucket. By golly, I am the kind of person who deserves, if you want my time, attention, and my expertise, you're going to, uh, I'm going to curse, and I'm not going to bleep this, uh, you're going to fucking put it on my calendar. Is That's that's how it goes now. Yeah, no, and, it, and it's, it is a, the, let me, let me go and speak some of the words. The the it, it is the value of it is several fold. One is I know I have a very when I meet somebody we want to talk again. It's a very easy follow up. Here is my link. Just click on this. Oh, let's we don't we we don't go back. We don't that number one. Two, you're not doing the scheduling dance. Other than when I completely screwed up and I forgot to put some things on my calendar and somebody's now I've told them twice now. Oh, I need you to reschedule because I forgot to put something on there and I feel like an idiot. Uh, they're not listening to the show, but I feel bad about that. And I, you know, but anyhow, um, it solves the scheduling dance. What's a good time for you? What's a good time for you? I don't know. Well, and, and plus, also like the the what's a good time for you? I I have to respond with the vaguest of of, of garbage answers. Like uh, in general, Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays tend to be free, but mostly in the morning. Blah 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 blah. Uh, I I think I'm ready to take the plunge and just have everything in my life just be scheduled and on rails and you can you can start you can create multiple calendars there too okay um uh somebody says if they aren't willing to do that little tiny bit of work then you don't want them to waste your time I, it, it, it depends it depends because sometimes i am the big shot other times i am very not the big shot that's and that's and, a good point yeah uh, where, and where, there are people. Where it's like, uh, like uh, for example, I will be on call for uh, uh, the potential that Teller or Peter Thiel or you know uh, uh, Barack Obama wants to give me a call or whatever, mm -hmm. and I will make make a, a lot of things contingent on it, uh, and and I think that's why I've been attracted to the wishy-washy way I've been doing things uh, until I have just heard the true words of Andrew Main. Uh, and, but anyway, yes. Yeah, so it, it is a, it, it's, it's, it solves the scheduling kind of drum of the back and forth. Um, if you want to start to get into next tier level stuff with it too, what you can start to do is you can say, you know, uh, Tuesdays are going to be when I meet somebody who, uh, you know, maybe it's somebody who just wants advice from me and I can't do that all the time. I'm going to have my Tuesday slot and I can say like, you can have a couple calendars. You can have a calendar you can give to somebody to say socially, somebody you meet to like, oh, I'd love to talk. Like, here's my calendar. And it's just got one two hour block that maybe they have to, maybe the next three weeks are going to take in. They'll have to put it into the future. But the advantage of that is, is that the rest of your calendar isn't filled up with things that you just don't have time for. I like to sit down and talk to people about ideas and give advice and consult and stuff like this. But I only have an X amount of time to do that. The beauty of your calendar is I can say, hey, you know, Tuesday afternoons, you know, from, you know, Tuesday afternoon from, you know, from one to four is anybody who wants to talk can be talk. And if I'm committing three hours a week, 
basically office hours, right? Like like you you declare uh, a slot where it's like uh, first come first served. Let's go. Yeah, but then I can have important business stuff slots. I can have another Calendly link that's like, oh, this is my much wider calendar that that if Brian wants to talk with me or somebody critical stuff, I could say, yeah, you've got you've got earlier slots Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I keep those open, so you can have multiple calendars and you can give people access to, you know, what there is. So that's a really that's a higher level way to use it. So basically, the idea is that. If you say, I, I want to spend three hours a week, yeah, doing open house, office hours, anybody who wants to ask me a question, here's my link. If you say, hey, you know, I, I need to, I have business development stuff, I have another calendar for that that's separate. There, there, there's something that I've fallen into, and uh, uh, this is not to uh, diminish, like, I, you have spoken the right words at the right time. I am going to embrace Calendly. Uh, but... Uh, uh, as a compensatory kind of uh, middle step, I've noticed that uh, when I call somebody, if they, uh, there are certain people that I call and they just don't pick up the phone. And I understand, even though we're deep uh, friends, need to stand forth, uh, that, that, that you're simply saying, now is not the right time, Brian. Try again later, right? Uh, but but then there's other people who will always pick up the phone, uh, like like you and Justin. Uh, at which point, I want to be, uh, I want to honor your time. So the first thing I'll blurt out is three minutes. Uh, you got three, and then uh, yes, no, whatever, and and then I try to make sure to wrap things up. I, I, I try to build a reputation for if if the first words are Brian says three minutes, it better be a three minute call. Uh, uh, if it's not a three minute call, then Brian is going to say, is now a good time? How much you got? You know, and then we'll negotiate and we'll figure out how much of the story we can get to. Yeah, I think it, it is. It's, it's time management is just a super critical thing. Um, I watched, uh, I keep it this little timer sometimes too, when I'm in the middle of projects and my brain wants to go do something else. And sometimes it's fine to take your mind off a thing, but you got to come back setting the timer. I watched some YouTube short and I, this is how culturally ignorant it is. Like I've heard the name Rob Deerdeck. I've heard the word ridiculousness and never knew what any of that was or what it was. Um, uh, uh, welcome. That's the introduction of me, the character Brian Brushwood, right now. Yeah. So do you know? Nope. Who he is? It, it ridiculous. Uh, yeah, no. Yeah, you literally just set up okay. the the next however many minutes you're going to talk. Go. So uh, MTV is pretty much nonstop ridiculousness now. The show. Okay. Ridiculousness is basically America's funniest home videos, but with, you know, MTV celebrity tier people on there watching a clip and whatever. And Rob Deerdeck, the host, and literally him with a couple people on a couch. It's literally the most minimal production you can imagine. And it's taken up just tremendous because like, you know, MTV in the wake of, you know, basically once the Internet started and YouTube videos and all this sort of stuff, Vivo, TikTok, all this dying and so like. He may even, I don't know the structure of the deal, but he may actually just be buying the slots on MTV and doing his own ads on it or whatever. Holy because it's just, moly. It's like, I, I, well, yeah. that, that, that would make sense. Uh, uh, okay, real quick. Um, uh, uh, number one, Reacts to is a brilliant format because all it does is uh, you input uh, essentially free stuff mostly. Uh, uh, MTV uh, is a natural fit for it because uh, before... Before MTV, people had to pay money to put their promotional music videos uh, in front of movies and stuff. And instead, it's like MTV is like, we'll take all of that for free and we'll make it, we'll treat it like it's content. Uh, by the way, please be real good at working hard on them. Um, uh, in layers, this is already a brilliant idea. Keep uh, keep going. I, I just want to make sure I understand everything. So I, I watched somebody describe this, saying that how uh, Rob uh, Dardek basically, and again, I apologize. I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I know he's a big celebrity. I'm just so outside the loop of things. Hey, we're And old. I'd seen the name. 
but uh he he basically like they do these marathons on stuff on mtv and um somebody had made the point as why they said that like yeah that rob like Rob's worth hundreds of millions of dollars, hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars, you know, built himself up to like, you know, incredible amount of success. The amount of, he only spends a small percentage of his time actually doing the show because he says, that, hey, my life is more important. My family is more important. These things are more important. And, you know, if I have and, and the, you look at the setup, the show and all that. And if you say, oh, well, if I'm going to spend 10 hours a week or two days a week working, what am I going to do with those two days? And that's the sort of thing of, of working backwards from time of saying, if I have this much time to spend on a thing, what am I going to do? Well, one, you're going to choose the most effective use of your time. You're going to be extremely efficient about your time. And now, you know, he's created a thing where, you know, they do, you know, um, I'm looking at like the episode count. Starting off, they were doing 16, 20. They'll do like 39 episodes, you know, the, in 2023. They'll, but they do them in blocks. So if you look at the total number of episodes, like each season – is like, you know, the now, you know, the season's no longer many years. So if you go look at like, I'm looking at the calendar for 2023 to tell you how many episodes he did 30, uh, 115, 150, 200, 260. He's doing like 300, almost 300 episodes a year. Uh, and, and, and the job is quite simply to be who he is and to react. To what he's seeing to have two pe guests sitting on a couch react and talk to them as they react that's the beauty of it what he did with the formula which was great was he instead of a big huge audience is you get you know uh, you get somebody who is you know a comedian Let, let's i'm going to pull up you know season 37 uh and you know like who are guests sterling and camille kostek i i don't even know who they are but you know they get like you have a mix up and rotating people through there and just you know it's him two guests whatever two or three guests they sit in there and do that and it could be like they're like mtv reality stars or whatever who are the ones reacting so you're adding this new sort of formula and one of the things i saw which was really kind of brilliant was that uh you could go back and I watched them do a thing like this episode's about people having trouble with doors. And it's a bunch of ring footage of people dropping stuff as they try to open a door. And it's like, well, yeah, you can go use that clip five more times because you just change up the makeup of the people reacting to it. So uh, th this is, a, uh, we're going to get real confessional right here. Uh, uh, I, I, I know that, I know that you are uh, auditioning, kind of kind of uh what you want to do next um i find myself in a strange paralysis because between ai moving so quickly like th there have been multiple times ai can do the vast majority of what it used to take 12 people to do uh, uh, uh but it doesn't now I, 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 and now all of a sudden it's it's relatively trivial and there are bit but there has been multiple times over the last two years that i've almost pressed the button on let's build the system on this because ai is finally here but and then all of a sudden ai, AI comes up with more stuff and i'm like hold on uh, uh likewise i i am still switching this program using uh, uh was three th there are three computers here but i'm only using two of them because so many systems have evolved to make it very very simple to change stuff and now we're talking about the atem and stuff and i know that at some point in the next year uh what i have is physical space what I have is a, 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 a genuine reputation uh, among real viewers, uh, but I find myself paralyzed by the fact that I don't want to make a, I oftentimes don't want to make a move because I'm, a, I'm afraid that it's just going to get even more efficient next week. Like it's 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 the it's the the when to leave pro problem. We've talked about this in the context of. Uh, climate change, uh, the, uh, the philosophical experiment is, let's say that all that matters in the entire universe is y that you get to Alpha Centauri in the soonest way possible. 
Do you leave today on a SpaceX vehicle? Do you uh, invest 50 years, 100 years in research and then or, or, or just wait until you invent teleportation? Like it's the with the leave problem that is so, so vexing and paralyzing for me. Well, you what you need to do is come up with some sort of re, you know rubric by which you measure these things. Um, when I was working on, I mentioned this in the last episode of Weird Things about when 2020, I built my AI channels app, functioning, working in an iPhone, chat with an AI, ask questions, search the web, do all this sort of stuff. It's very much like what you know Chat GPT, these other systems do. I had that in 2020 because I had access to GPT-3 and was able to play with this and do this, whatever. Okay, figure it out. Problems people are going to have to solve. How do you continue a conversation? Do long context? All these sorts of things. I said, okay, cool. This is. I showed it. You know, Greg Brockman loved it. Everybody opening eye, they loved it. Like, are you going to release it? I'm like, here's the thing. I don't want to charge forty bucks a month for this thing. I want to be able to have a really huge treat here, and that's going to depend upon the cost of GPT three. And I did a chart, I did a spreadsheet, and I said, if the token cost is below this. I can do this. I have a vi- I have a viable business. Now I could have had a business charging 34 bucks a month for people who want to talk to AI stuff, but it was a very weird audience and not something I was excited about engaging with. I didn't want it because I, I I see those companies where they are right now. Very wealthy, very successful. That's great. That's I not a thing that I want. It's it's I'm I'm a, I'm in a very comfortable place in my life. And if I have to sacrifice something, that's not what I want. So anyhow, hey, well, I had a spread. I, 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 to to summarize, uh, I, I think you and I are both more motivated by the currency of having made a proper dent in the universe than we are by a paycheck. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And there are times where, you know, uh, you know, there there are times where, of course, you have to be very pragmatic and practical and stuff like that. We get into that in another topic. But anyhow, I had a spreadsheet. I said, if it's below this cost, I have a viable, I have a business I'll be happy running, and I can see the pathway to grow. You know, to, okay. It came out with the token cost, and it was way above what I was gonna my margin. So I said, I'm not gonna launch this company. I'm not gonna start this company. Um, uh, and and there's an argument we say that well, had I launched it, I would be in a really good position now. But I would have been spending the last four years switching business models and playing on stuff and trying to get investors and, and playing a different kind of game, not really focusing on the product, trying to focus on trying to justify the existence of the company thing, which I didn't want to do. Now, were my passion still that company? Because I still think actually it's, it's, it's a very basic idea, but there's a lot of ideas that are there. It's great. The cost is now perfect time to launch. I could say, well, yeah, but cost may go down anymore. I don't need them to. I've got the thing I'm working right now, my ed tech platform, which I think I've shown you a bit, Brian, what I'm working on, my educational platform. I needed cost to fall to a certain level. And I started building towards that. And I built out a thing that I'm very happy the costs are. While doing that, costs fell down even more and cost co- and, and models got even better. And so I'm in an even better position now than I was a month ago. So you just pick that point to say, this formula, if everything meets this formula, then I do it. Uh- I think of it, uh, what you just described, uh, uh, I don't know if we've talked about this on the air publicly or when, whatever, but I, I have a lot of conversations with myself. I, I literally, when I when I have thoughts uh, that I verbalize in my brain, I say, so are we doing this? Are we doing this? Or explain to me why we would do this or whatever. Um, and... Uh, 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 I, uh, there are certain things that I reduce down to if then I'm like, ah, so it's an if then, uh, and then, um, uh, so, so, so if I'm hearing you correctly, basically set a few if thens on, yeah. on what to pull the, the trigger on. I don't think people use that enough to make decisions. I think that I had, you know, one of the biggest points facing my life was, when, as you know, in the TV game, really, it's 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 a it's a series of steps. A scratch off lottery tickets. Uh, uh, you get increasing uh, uh, valuable ones, uh, but 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 at, at any point, one of them can fail, and then you just have to shrug and start the next do, one. Do I get the meeting? Do I get the meeting? The person I want to talk to. Yep. Do they like the idea and ask for follow up? Do they do they want to have another meeting? Do they say yes? Let's do a to a, a pilot. Do does a pilot 
get like good response? Does the pilot decide they're going to try to make something happen that season? Do we actually go into production? Does the show air? Do they like the show? Yeah, do did you they get also a... bother to promote the show correctly at the right exactly. time? Uh, and they're, all that stuff. It's, it's, yeah, uh, it, it, uh, I think of the James Webb telescope and the, what do they say, 367 points of failure or whatever. Yeah, and it, so it's exactly, it's the same thing. So uh, what what I think about when I was dealing with, all of a sudden I hear, you know, I already did my pilot. And is Amy going to want to do a series? And I'm like, okay, I'm at this very interesting point right now. There's outcome A, they do a series. Outcome B, they say no. And and I'm not a person that's going to let somebody else determine the, my fate, my future. Now, I can't control whether or not they were going to give me a show or not, but I could control my reaction to that. And so I sat down and I said, I have a plan A and a plan B. Plan A was no. Plan A was no. They, they don't do a show. And my plan A was I looked at my publishing career and I said, what do I need to do to become like a James Patterson level publish, you know, writer? I said, here's how I can do my output. This is how I can go every year. This is good to do this. Dot, 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 dot. And then I did a plan B. Well, if they say yes, whatever. I didn't develop plan B as much. And by the time I got done writing, I was more excited about plan A. I was more excited about getting a no. Yeah. And then when they got a yes, I didn't really know what to do. Because I, I, I had been so expecting a no. When I finally got the yes, I got the show. I'm like, and then I had opportunities come up once I had the show. I didn't know what to do with because I really hadn't thought it through. I'd like, I had an opportunity to like do Asia tours and all this other stuff. And it was just, I don't know, I really thought I, I, I don't think I'm going to get in trouble for saying this because I don't think anybody who's listening will uh, be part of the audience. But um, uh, I don't know how or why the agent called me, but they basically said, oh, I have to be vague enough that I don't disrespect anyone. Uh, there's an event on so-and-so date. Are you free to do 30 minutes? Uh, and uh, the answer was, yeah, sure. What do they want? And then, uh, and then it's like, and the, the, the response kind of shocked me and my response shocked my, me again. They, they basically said, uh, they're all engineers, dry as paper, just be more interesting than the astronaut that got the gig last year. And I quoted a number, and I'm not going to lie, Andrew, like, I have no, I still, like, if they, it, it, I'm going to go check my email, and it may say you're booked next month, and I have no worries that I will be more interesting than whatever astronaut they had last year. But I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> uh, I don't know, I, I have no idea. Um, uh, I, I'm not sure why this particular story bubbled to the surface, but, but, but at some point, I think my point was that when you realize that you as a person are a story generating engine, you have one job and that is to move if you are moving you are making money if you are moving you're on the phone if you are moving you are establishing relationships if you are not moving then we have we me and the other half of my brain my roommate uh, have a problem don't we it's like what are we doing at all times and i guess that's uh all bubbling up because of the Calendly uh, prompt at the beginning. I am working on a project. My my inter interest in education stuff started with um, a Sam Altman had recommended OpenAI that we all read Profiles of the Future. As an Arthur C. Clarke fan, I never managed to read this book. Uh, in order to give everybody at OpenA a copy of this, oh, by the way, we did a thousand print run because I'm like it'll be it'll be years before we reach a thousand employees. <laughs> <laughs> Little, I hate it in plan, right? Uh, but yeah, we actually have the OpenAI logo on this. We did an official print run of this, but there was a passage in here um, where uh, Arthur C. Clarke talked about what are ways in which you could increase the rate at which you learned, right? This, uh, you know, changing. Yeah, yeah, yes. Quick, uh, a minor side jag. Um, uh, uh, there's something I really, I, I forget where I read it, but somebody said, uh, when you think of politics, people often say, do your own research. Uh, 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 the, the response to that is no, 
read something that challenges you and like 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 find something that makes you uncomfortable that's where you need to be if if you're comfortable you're not in the right place yeah you want to be pushing yourself you know continuously you know on to the next levels and stuff so um that was the thing where i found a thing that just had me interested like most of the books on the shelf and stuff and whatnot because it just you just find a thing and you say oh i'm gonna explore this for a long time um i feel so, like you and i have been talking but i wonder what this conversation looks like from the outside because you, you and i you, 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 you and i have have different brains from other people yeah long story short control your time figure out what you want to do with your time tools that help you control your time are good calendly is a great time controlling tool things that give you more time are great and uh the danger can be though that uh I, 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 you know, uh, one of the things that Anthropics Claude does is really cool is artifacts. So if you want to spin up little examples of code and so like, you know, last night sitting, you know, sitting in bed with my wife, she's reading and I pull up a thing. I started coding. I didn't code. I had Claude found out it could build a, uh, give you, I'll give you a really quick demo, Brian. Um, sure, and, sure. Uh, let me pull this up for you. show you what's kind of cool. Um, Here, I'll throw you on the full screen. All right, let me share with this and then and and I would say I have no inside knowledge, but I will tell you that any any feature you see in one place is probably going to continue on somewhere else and each version will get better. So I'm going to go into Claude right now. And this is uh, I have enabled as the the their, their experimental feature, which basically you can I use my coast most of my coding I do inside of a thing called cursor. But if I want to create something fun, um, create a rapid serial visual presentation app that lets me control words per minute. Use something from Douglas could, Adams as the text. Could, okay, could, go ahead. could you use this kind of uh, a prompt like like just to create like for example I I'm doing uh, I don't know I I did a presentation for a three letter agency uh, last year and I and I and part of me was embarrassed that there were multiple slides that that I created back in two thousand eight um, uh, and and it's like well I, I run subroutine what's the answer to fix that hire artist and I'm like yeah requires money should not do. Uh, it seems to me like if I told the story that I was trying to tell that, that there probably would be a, I bet Claude could create every single oh, visual yeah. I needed. Chat GPT. Actually, if you want to, all right. So Claude is trying to load a bunch of unsupported libraries right now. Um, uh, meanwhile, I'm going to go into chat GPT and, uh, what you can do. And so, so I guess, I guess, yeah. So like I could just tell chat GPT, Hey, I have a presentation. I need to create visuals for it. These are, uh, uh, what would be the best way to begin that? Uh, would, would okay. it be for me to upload the existing presentation yeah. and, and say, update I'll, this or what? Yeah. Let me, let me finish this and I'll show you that in another window. Okay. So right now, if you describe what we actually had, Claude just created this RSVP app for us. Wow. Right. Which is <laughs> rapid. That's showing you one word at a time. And it's showing us it's flashing words and I can control the words per minute. Got it. And so it just built that. Wow. And, wait, wait, uh, you know, sorry, sorry, sorry. The, the, the prompt, what was the prompt that you wrote? The prompt was create a rapid serial visual presentation app that lets me control words per minute, use something from Douglas Adams as the text. It gave, it tried twice and each code broke. So I just pasted it in the error messages and then finally it got it right. Cause it was trying to use libraries it couldn't access. That was it. Holy moly. I could put, I could have a thing where I could paste text in here or whatever, but like, this is something that I'd previously spent weeks, weeks building. Okay. So, um, 
Now, uh, each system kind of has their advantages, disadvantages. My problem with Claude is I very quickly, because they don't manage long context really well, I very quickly run out of stuff. Um, so what we can do, I'm going to show you using ChatGPT over here. Rai said, create a slideshow with images about terraforming. And I could say, I said, yes, create the images. Now you could put in your script okay. for your presentation. And, and okay? all I have to do is take a, literally any, like what was the best version of this that I ever performed? And then I could just grab the audio from it, have it trans, transformed into text, and then say, this is the pres presentation. These are the slides that were used. Uh, uh, fix it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, you could fix it. I'll put an HTML format, whatever, PPT. So this is actually creating this for me right now. So it's generating the images. And I'm just told it, I did, you know, it did the worst demo ever. It's like write my slide, put my, my slideshow presentation for me. But notice how it's created. It's just generating. This is chat GPT now generating the images one after the other. Um, without me i just said create the images for it so it's creating how many images is it created in a row for me now like Holy one two moly. three four five six seven eight nine um and then yeah. i'm going to see we'll push the limits and see if it can put them into a ppt presentation well and and i am the type of presenter that that likes to uh keep slides on for less than two seconds at a time i i i i, I, I want there to be a feeling of momentum the entire time and now yes uh, uh, there is kind of a um uh, I, th I, th I think we talked about this before i i predict there'll be kind of a comic sans slash papyrus difficulty with uh uh ai generated stuff there, you can like tell it they got much better you can tell it like let's see can you can you a ppt presentation I, I, my my point being that it's not the uh, system that will change. It'll be the audience's tastes that, that will yeah. evolve. Yeah. Yeah. So right now I've asked it to create a PowerPoint presentation based upon the slides it just generated. And we'll see. I don't know how it's going to actually handle the slides themselves, but I might have to go fix it somewhere else. But yeah, you can you can get a long way towards taking a presentation and saying, can you do something cool for me with this. Um, That's wonderful. Let's see if it's actually able to generate this. Uh, the problem it has is uh, often it'll use in the image names, so it'll have like commas and stuff in there. Oh, and so can it It'll it'll break the uh, the code because it's pivoting from image names to code. Oh, yeah. Well, like yeah. It'll it'll the way Dolly the the like ChatGPT will store those images is they will just take the uh, the prompt to do that. And the problem when they take the prompt to do it is sometimes they put commas in there. Yeah. So we'll see what happens here. But yeah, it, it's a. Uh, um. My word, like if, if I had, Oh shoot. Um, it, it worked. Let's go for reals. Yeah. Let me, uh, I don't think it's a, okay. But, uh, uh, it occurs to me that, uh, you know, uh, the problem most of us are going to have is that we don't have access to infinite computing power. Um, but if we had a little bit of money, we'd be able to say things like, Hey, I did a pretty good talk once. Uh, just take all of this and clean up the script, uh, create all the visuals, fix all the copyright issues, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, you're going to get, uh, let me try this. Um, this is horribly formatted. Oh my God. My word. Andrew Main. Uh, uh, will you please get, will you please click the presentation button and give me a presentation? Well, I want to, I mean, it, it has, um, shows you how often I've used PowerPoint. Um, 
I'd say I can't believe it worked, except for I. Yeah, it, I, the I text is it I didn't wouldn't. do any text layout, but it put the text in the image. It generated the images, created the text, created the entire file with that. And so, if I wanted to, uh, so so now, at, at this point, you could take what exists right now and upload it and say, "Hey, I need citations and uh, precise quotes uh, for all of the issues. I need to I need to fix." You could go like one slide at a, at a time and say, uh, "Oh yeah." Yeah, hey, you can do a lot, but we just we you, just got we're looking at like you know what is Terraform for me right now, and I literally just had to move the text around because it didn't didn't pay attention to the text. If I said do an HTML presentation, by the way, it probably would have nailed it. Wow! But it literally it wrote it it so for audio listeners, I went into ChatGPT and I said make a thing on terraforming. It produced it wrote the text for the slideshow. It generated thirteen images. It just said all I said was write a, do a PowerPoint presentation on this. And then it said, do you want the images? I said, yes. And then I said, turn it into a PowerPoint file I can download. It had a couple error messages, but it, it worked through its own error messages. Generated a file. I downloaded it. It just opened it in PowerPoint. The images are, uh, the the only problem is the, the it, it had like the overlapping text because it didn't format the text. Sure, sure, sure. The sure. images are there. Everything else is there. Like it just literally I created the so 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 if you still have the prompt running in chat gpt what happens uh uh i i i expect it'll be quite good at this it's like uh uh, uh if you could enhance your prompt by saying uh above is excellent period uh um uh, uh alter so that every 45 seconds a cute joke is made uh, yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And then, and then, it, I assume it would be, uh, whether it's a meme or whatever. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm like literally all I'm doing right now is I'm just going through and moving the text down and just reformatting it. But it's just, and I could probably tell it like, hey, your text is there. But I mean, look at that. It's just insane. That's crazy. Um, that's, that's July, 2024, you know, that, that, that is where we are today. I do not know where we'll be a year from now. I do not know where we're going to be two years from now. I have to imagine this is not going to be marginally better, but substantially better a year from now. Cause one of the things that's happening to an AI is that a lot of the mistakes you'll see I making like, oh, it, it can't tell you if 9.11 or 9.9 .9 is bigger, which seems like it's not a really a fundamental thing. It's more of a training mistake. A lot of these things you just go, oh, I need to add those examples to training and it won't make that mistake before. Or, oh, I'm doing these really long prompts. I need to train it on really long back and forths now. And now it understands. Yeah. Uh, w what's wild is, uh, yes, there are people, again, uh, uh, as I've watched it, a lot of this and thought about it, uh, uh, a lot of people who perform mechanical duties will be terrified by this. However, any creator, artist of any type, it's like uh, it's more valuable than ever to be an actual human. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, I guess I guess I have to. You know what? I'm not, I'm gonna check my email. I'm gonna find out whether or not I got that gig. I'm gonna find out what they want, and I'm gonna figure out how to be more interesting than that astronaut. And my my best friend Chatty G is gonna be the one that does it. Yep. Chatty G for the win. Uh, look, my. My pick is uh, as soon as we hang up the phone, go see Wolverine and Deadpool because I would like to talk to you about it. We got our tickets. We got our tickets. I was, but while we're talking to you, I'm like booking tickets online. Tell my wife, hey, do you want to go see this? Whatever. So uh, yeah, Justin yeah. wouldn't let me say it, but but uh, uh, the story I wanted to tell, not a spoiler. Don't uh, worry. Uh, all right. Goodbye. No, no, no it's not. It's oh, God damn it. He really did. All right. Bye, guys. Uh, that's uh, it's been after. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> what a way to go out. <laughs> uh, all right. Love you guys. Uh, bye. Ha, 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 ha.